lunchtime and we are going to open and taste this Jarlsberg that I filmed back in July. It aged for a couple weeks at 55 degrees. Then we brought it out to room temperature for about a month and then you put it back in the fridge and you can just let it go until you want to eat it. I want to eat it. When we packed it, it was tight and you can see it has expanded. There's air around it. It kind of busted the bag. That's what happens when making a Jarlsberg and it starts to expand because of the eye development. Right there, that little bit of air. It's just loose around here. It's okay, doggies. Somebody shot a gun and now they're gonna wanna come in. This is the Jarlsberg that I made with the new Propionic Shimani. So hopefully it will have the eyes that we are wanting it to have. There's also a little bit of fat. I can see that in the bag. Oh, I don't know. I can never really tell what they smell like. They just smell like a little bit of acid, a little bit of milk, a little bit of cheese. It's not a great smell. It's like kind of neutral. Pause while I bring the dogs in. Oh, so hot today. Such a hot day, I need paper towels. There's a little bit of butter in there and I wanna show you that butter. Oh goodness, come on. Can't really see on the cheese. The cheese is dry. It's just like a smidge of oil back in the corners but it's hardly visible. This is dry. It is kind of firm. It does not feel soft at all. It doesn't even feel like there's holes. So we're gonna see if there's any holes in here. Ah, not many. Daggum. What's that about? Got butter on me. Last time I had so much more holes. Do you see how that's like solid and that split, which is that means, I don't know, I never know what that means. It's even like a vertical split almost. Do you see how that vertical line right there? Hmm. Let's taste. It's really nice. A little bit dry. Hmm, just a touch dry. Here's the part without the holes. It's good too, it's good. But it just doesn't have the proper hole development. I've done other ones that have great hole development. Eye development, not hole development. Man, I'm so hot. Um, When I think of Jarlsberg, I think of it as being a little bit more pliable and a little bit rubbery. Rubbery, not in the bad sense, rubbery in a good sense. And this has a little bit more of a soft paste to it. It's not soft, it's still rubbery, but it doesn't quite have the same toothsomeness or the same chew that I expect to have in a Jarlsberg. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit dry. I made this with yogurt. There's no weird flavor from the yogurt. It's more of a cross between a mild cheddar in a Jarlsberg, which is not bad. It has a little bit of that Swiss cheese taste, which I like. The texture's just not quite right. So it's a good cheese. There's nothing bad with it. This is the thing about cheese making. Things will not turn out right a lot of the time, especially when you, if you're working in your home kitchen and there's so many variables. Most of the things that turn out weird or wonky are still totally fine. Most of them, sometimes they're not, but mostly they are and they're still edible. I'm gonna do a little research I'm gonna get back to you on this, hang on. I don't know why the whole development isn't even. I had stopped stirring the curds at the 18 minute mark because they were cooked and done and I didn't want to get them too dry. I wonder if I had should have like stopped them even earlier, like at the 15 minute mark. Like maybe this is a little bit too much cooked. I can't quite tell. The other thing is I, I kind, well, I kind of think this is an aging problem. Like this should have been aged at room temperature for that month at 65 degrees. And I did put it in a cheese cave the wine fridge at 65 degrees and I left it there and I was flipping it. But even so, my temperatures aren't perfect and maybe that was the problem. Don't quite think that's completely the problem because I have done Jarlsberg before, my temperatures fluctuate and it turned out great. Also, this vertical split problem, see this vertical crack? I was like, what is that vertical crack? I have no idea. And I couldn't find anything on vertical cracks and cheese. And then I went and watched my video and I cut the cheese in half before I backpacked it and I forgot, it looked like a whole cheese. So the vertical crack is my knife crack. See, right here. That's where it was. Let me look at this one. So here's the vertical crack now that I know it's there. 
I can see it. If I split it here, this is where it was pressed together. And that's where I'm cutting it. Yeah, it looks like the holes just didn't get all the way through. I don't know. I guess maybe keeping it out more? That's my best guess, keeping it out longer. It's hard to find troubleshooting for this type of thing. There is this in this book, Kitchen Creamery, Luella's book, which I really enjoy. She does have this page where you can look up the different eye development. Is there a big crack in here? I thought I saw one. Where'd it go? Yeah, like right there. Extremely large eye holes can happen randomly. So we'll just chalk that up to randomness. The slits may mean the acidity was low or the cheese went through temperature fluctuations. Well, of course the cheese went through temperature fluctuations. Very small eye development means may mean the bacterial cultures were weak or the aging temperatures were too cold. Yeah, yeah. Too few. Oversalting. I don't think I oversalted. This was brined and it tastes a good level of salting. It should be pressed well and then kept at the correct temperatures. I really think it was maybe an aging thing. That's the best I can come up with. And I wonder if this too is a process of having this vacuum packed when it is going, maybe I should be putting it in a bag and making sure there's air in the bag so it can go completely because maybe it was puffing up and then coming back down. I don't think the propionic shermani is a problem. I think, I think that's okay. But you know what? A lot of these holes also look like mechanical holes because they're irregular and when you're doing eye development you want it to be a round kind of glossy hole like in there like this one i mean you know what it looks like in the store like that right there is a really good one and there's a bunch of these irregular things which maybe it is a pressing problem maybe i didn't press it well i don't know why is it at the either end and not in the middle <laughs> oh well it tastes good i don't know whatever it's the olive bread oh my god a heap of food I got Lebanon bologna. Lebanon bologna. We got American cheese. Colby cheese and it's store-bought, the trader. Amazing stuff. We got homemade apples. Homemade apples? I don't think so. And we got smashed pretzels. Bon appetit. <laughs>